Hello, my name is Fedor Kulinovic, and I'm here to talk to you about the importance of universal design with the example of COVID-19 Design Handbook, a team of designers designed for us just when the pandemic of COVID-19 started in the Western Balkans region. So what is universal design? The definition says that universal design is the design and composition of an environment so that it can be accessed understood and used to the greatest extent possible by all people, regardless of their age, size, ability, or disability. This means that this environment is also building a product or service and that environment should be designed to meet the needs of all people who wish to use it, regardless of who they are and what their abilities or disabilities are. It is important to stress that this is not a special requirement for the benefit of only minority of the population, but is universal for everyone. And it is a fundamental condition of good design. Everyone benefits if an environment is accessible, usable, convenient, and a pleasure to use. And universal design by considering the diverse needs and abilities of all throughout the design process, creates products, services, and environments that meet people's needs. But let's see what the principles of this universal designs are. There are seven principles of universal design. The first one is equitable use. The design is useful and marketable to people with diverse abilities. One of the, there are several examples uh, here, the first one is provide the same means of use for all users, identical whenever possible or equivalent when not. Second example is avoid segregating or stigmatizing any users. And the third one is provisions for privacy, security, and safety should be equally available to all users. Finally, the final example is make the design appealing to all users. The second principle is flexibility in use. The design accommodates a wide range of individual preferences and abilities. The examples of this principle are provide choice in methods of use, accommodate right or left-handed access and use, facilitate the user's accuracy and precision, and provide adaptability to the user's pace. The third principle is simple and intuitive use. Use of the design is easy to understand regardless of the user's experience, knowledge, language skills, or current concentration level. The examples of this principle are eliminate, uh, eliminate unnecessary complexity, be consistent with user expectations and intuition, accommodate a wide range of literacy and language skills, arrange information consistent with its importance, provide effective prompting and feedback during and after task completion. The fourth principle is perceptible information. The design communicates necessary information effectively to the user, regardless of ambition, condition, or the user's sensory abilities. And the examples are use different modes, pictorial, verbal, tactile, for redundant presentation of essential information. Provide adequate contrast between essential information and surroundings. Maximize legibility of essential information. Differentiate elements in ways that can be described i.e. make it easy to give instructions or directions. And finally, provide compatibility with a variety of techniques or devices used by people with sensory limitations. Principle five, tolerance for error. The design minimizes hazards and the adverse consequences of accidental or unintended actions. Examples are arrange elements to minimize hazards and errors, most used elements, most accessible hazardous elements eliminated, isolated or shielded, provide warnings of hazards and errors, provide fail-safe features, discourage unconscious action and tasks that require vigilance. The sixth principle is low physical effort. The design can be used efficiently and comfortably and with a minimum of fatigue, which is particularly important for people with motoric disabilities. Examples are allow, allow users to maintain a neutral body position, Use reasonable operating forces, minimize repetitive actions, minimize sustained physical effort. And finally, the seventh principle is size and space for approach and use. 
Appropriate size and spaces provided for approach reach manipulation and user regardless of user's body, posture, or mobility. Examples are that you provide a clear line of sight to important elements for any seated or standing users. Make reach to all components comfortable for any seated or standing users and accommodate variations in hand and grip size. And finally, provide adequate space for the use of assistive devices or personal assistance. Simply put, universal design is good design with all these principles laid in front of you. Now, how did we apply these principles in designing the handbook for visual contents for the COVID-19 design? Let me first give you some background information. The, the, the process of creating this handbook started in March and April 2020, just like I said, and it was designed by the team of three persons uh, from Hera Fro and uh, Anna Lukinda, meaning El, uh, Eldin um, Herenda, Amia Herenda, and Anna Lukinda. When we talk about the principles of uh, design, we can see that the brutal type primary topography uh, sufficiently uh, is showing the, prime, the, the most important information in a visible manner. And that was the goal of choosing this type of topo topography. Uh, so it is visible for, to everyone. The wide range of colors that are important in information system uh, that is universal with um, regards to red as something that is forbidden and uh, green as something that is of lower importance is something where we couldn't follow the principle to the fullest but this is why we made this gray color uh, a basic color so we can actually design uh, create universal designs for for different types of users the logo is in the same principle where the visibility and universality of design is, is shown through a black and white principal um, des designs of the logo, but wide range of color is also provided. On the other side, the symbol symbols provide universal design for those who have reading difficulties. The same goes with the illustrations uh, that are emphasized through the design of the handbook. Uh, as well as through different examples of documents that uh, are provided here as an example. As, as an example. Um, here you can see different types of designs like the infographics where it is obvious that regardless of your reading ability, you can follow the process of, for instance, washing your hands or um, staying safe. On the other side, we apply the same principle in so for social media, where we paid attention to um, disability uh, vision, vision uh, impairment, uh, as well as again uh, inability to uh, read uh, quite well. And the contrast was designed throughout uh, these examples. Different colors have been applied for different importance, but also these colors uh, assist in providing the intensity of, of light so everyone can universally recognize what is actually that we're trying to convey as a, an important information. We've included several elements of this. Uh, the groups of, of these design icons that go from uh, the health care workers to media. And of course, considering this is a localized example, we've uh, presented the examples of design of the states uh, that the BMAP project covers. Through additional efforts, we've also tried to adhere to the seven principles of universal design. Therefore, in order to enable everyone with different abilities to uh, design their own 
um, information packages on COVID-19, we have designed also, we have prepared also Canva design package, followed with the icon set that can be downloaded. And we made everything available in Creative Commons non-commercial with attribution uh, and distributed it through our website, balkansmedia.org. If you should have any questions, uh, I'm always available to you, but please have in mind that these principles, if you apply them, will bring better satisfaction of users of whichever product you are creating. Thank you and stay safe.